what that does is pull it around the defenseman Ekholm's stick right here. He pulls it around Ekholm's stick, and then the puck explodes straight up under the bar. Unreal. Connor Bedard. Well, the Chicago Blackhawks. What a goal there. This is interesting to see a Daily Sports Podcast news narratives takes and gambling. Controversial Wednesday. The Edmonton Oilers did get the best of the Chicago Blackhawks, despite Connor Bedard being super sick. Connor McDavid, two assists in the game. So who is Canada's most favorite? Connor, this right now, it's Connor McDavid. We've got some stuff to talk about. Let's start with the National Basketball Association, where there are fun headline after fun headline after fun headline. Actually, we'll start with this. This is really quick. Uh, Bill Belichick, uh, apparently the Patriots and Belichick have made it official. They will be parting ways at the end of the season, uh, as is a shock to nobody. So where is he going to go? Where are the betting markets say he's going to go? I like him to take a year off. Honestly, I think he should probably do that and go learn some people management skills. Uh, he wants the all-time wins records, which he will get. I mean, just go get healthy, man. Lose some weight. Learn some more analytics stuff. Just take, take a year. Maybe go decoordinate somewhere. That'd be interesting. Um Go somewhere that's got a sick roster, take all the credit. I mean, I would do that. That's that's what I would do. Okay. The National Basketball Association is in the midst of a ref crisis. So let's take a look at this Nikola Jokic situation. Let's start here. Jokic, underneath, nearly got it to go. Vucevic, the rebound. He thought he was fouled, too. He just let him know. So you saw that. Jokic missed. Then there's a miss here and a foul on this end. Jokic's arguing with the officials down. So watch it closely. So there's Jokic. He misses. Watch him right here. Right, He's turning around to the refs. He's saying something. Then blah, blah, blah. And now we found there's a whistle. Technical foul was called and Jokic is being ejected. Well, I'm going to mute this. So there he is. He's like, what the hell? What the hell? KCP gets the shooting foul. He got mad. Said he was fouled. Looked like he was fouled a little bit. He was ejecting Jokic from the game. That can't be right, can it? So this has been happening. Uh, Reps are getting fussy. Giannis is ejected for something like this. I mean, it just keeps happening and happening. However, there's more and more uh, crazy stuff happening also. Draymond Green's having a full-blown blown meltdown last night. He just punched Nikola Jokic in the, in the face. To Warriors on NBCS, on the NBC Sports Network and for the Coast. Watch Draymond Green here. This is crazy. This is in the game. Just like punched him in the face. Like, so refs, are, are they struggling in the NBA to maintain control of the situation? Or are they just like in their feelings? They just like feel, they just feel upset when people get mad at them for stuff. I, I genuinely, I don't know, but it continues... It keeps happening. It just keeps happening. These ejections are wild. I don't understand. All right, so let's go to some other news. There's breaking news out of uh, Washington, D.C. for all of the D.C. people probably following this. Um, the Caps and the Wizards are going to be in Virginia, apparently, from Potomac Yard. It is a $500 million throwdown. Uh ESPN source Monumental Sports in Washington win, win, Monumental Sports, which is a company, and Washington Wizards owner Ted Leon, Leon, Leonsis, I don't know, plans to join Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin in Alexandria, Virginia, for a news conference on Wednesday to unveil plans for a proposed new arena complex and entertainment district for the Wizards and the NHL's Capitals. DC losing their sports. Um, there's just not a good sports town. If anybody that lives there will tell you that. But there's a good sports town culture bubbling under the surface of all the people that you hated in high school that moved there to try to save the world, which is who lives there now. So that is what's happening in, in Washington, D.C. And I, it's better. It is objectively better for sports in America that they have somewhere to go. Washington, D.C. is one of the best places for sports, or it's one of the biggest cities in America. It's a, it's a destination. But what they do, the arena that they have, I think it's like in Chinatown, is gross. Nobody likes it. Nobody goes. It's way too expensive. It just it has become a disaster. The cap, the the Nationals are different. The baseball team is different because it's baseball. You need baseball in a town where there's a lot of corporate stuff. People can kind of go on their day off or whatever during the day. You can give tickets to people. And baseball, the DC baseball situation is fine. I think they're actually a pretty good fan base. 
but the capitals and the wizards need to be among the people. And apparently DC is so landlocked, they can't build stuff. It's too expensive. And there's a bunch of political stuff going on in Washington, DC. They're just going to Virginia, which I think from a tax standpoint will be better for all the players. And that players are starting to, especially in the NBA and the NHL, the NBA and the NHL are leading the way on this. Players are getting woke to how much money they save on taxes. There's Bedard's goal. Look at Draymond Green just so boop, boop, boop. God, I can't believe that. That's just craziness that he would do that. Let's talk about LSU women's basketball. Last night, they won by a score of 133 to 44, which is crazy. But the entire team is melting down. Kateri Poole is no longer with the LSU women's basketball team. And the head coach, whose name is Kim Mulkey, I believe, she was like, hey, this girl's no longer with the team. This person is no longer with the team. I think they use they, them pronouns, but I don't know. That's also a mystery, and I have not investigated very far. So let's listen to this TikTok. Shush, TikToker. I want to hear from Kim. Where's Kim? Where is she? Oh, she does, does she not have Kim there? Yeah, so this Kateri Pool person is responsible for getting Angel Reese there, and Angel Reese hasn't been playing. So there's a lot of drama, and so I, they go out last night, and they take care of business kind of run it up on this poor McNeese State Cowgirls team. I don't know what's going on. They're melting down. What's happened is they got a taste of fame and fortune after winning the national championship and some of their best players are so famous that they can't on TikTok that they can't go to class safely. So they're reading their they're reading their press clippings essentially, which for the most part I wouldn't care about, but the drama is just and Kim Mulkey, the head coach doing the right thing. She's not the the rumors on the street are that the best player and most famous player, Angel Reese, isn't passing, so she can't play. She's academically ineligible. Apparently, people who are lazy are getting kicked off or that are, you know, cancers in the locker room. Apparently, they're getting kicked off. So this is a positive. That's what you want from your franchise, right? Like, that's what you want. But they've become a bit of a sideshow. They really have. And uh, I don't really mind Zion Williamson responding to Colin Coward. Is it Colin Coward? Everyone calling him fat. I think it was Stephen A. Smith. Here's Zion, who looks so fat in this. Do you think what, what Barkley and Shaq said last week, like, do you view that as a legitimate critique? And it was Barkley and Shaq. They were like, we were fat in our career, and then we figured out we can't be fat. Exactly what they say? I mean, essentially it was um, like we... Those, both those guys said we struggled with some conditioning stuff early in our career, and like that got better, and we kind of we see that in this game a little bit too. Uh, if it comes from a great place and a place where they just want to see me do better, thank you. But if it comes from anywhere else, everybody entitled their own opinion. Can't control that. Is there any of that stuff that you hear and you feel? Which is interesting. So I think this is a guy who's addicted to food. He. Um, He's saying, like, if they're trying to help me, I respect that. But if they're making fun of me, that sucks. Because a lot of guys are making fun of him because he's so fat. But he... Because Shaq and Barkley were really on Joel Embiid early in his career, too, because it was like he would take nights off and stuff. And they're like, you can't do that. You could be so great if you didn't didn't do that. So they're, I think they're, they're doing it from a good spot, man. I do it from a good spot. I have this one from Bleacher Report. Check this out. This is Pat Bev. Uh, the player for the Philadelphia 76ers, and what's he doing at his press conference after a game? He's cracking a cold one. Look at this. He's like, dude, come at me. I like that a lot. I wish more players were just like themselves. I love that. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go to Nicole Yurkic talking about getting punched in the face by Draymond Green. What's going on with him? I don't know. Personally, I feel like that brother needed help. I'm glad he didn't try to choke me, but at the same time, and nothing to do with basketball, man. Like, I'm just out there trying to play basketball, you know, they're swinging. I think we saw that often, but um, hopefully, you know, whatever he got in his life, it get better. Uh, that's such a great way to high road someone, just implying like, oh, this meltdown is such a bad meltdown that there must be something going on in your personal life. <laughs> Will Levis threw a pick six to a defensive lineman and then two yards into the end zone tried to shoulder up a defensive lineman with his throwing shoulder. Here's Coach Vrabel talking about how dumb that is. Uh, we're still trying to work on that. We showed him examples of quarterbacks sliding and using the rules to their advantage. I guess we'll have to show him examples of quarterbacks not sliding 
and getting the knocked out of them. So we're going to try the the other way this week. Uh, we're still trying to work on. I love that from Coach Vrabes, man. I love that from Coach Vrabes. You got to do that, Willie. You got to do that. You want to see one of the most athletic human beings to ever live get shit talked by a long snapper? DK Metcalf has been learning sign language to talk shit on his opponents without getting fined. And here is the San Francisco 49ers long snapper. Remember, DK got ejected for trying to fight Fred Warner. Oh, this is so tough. Look, all right. Hey, 14, fuck around and find out. Oh, there are rivalries in the NFL. Don't tell me there aren't.